Hello my lovelies, how are we all today? I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome or welcome back to Trapped by Love. My name is Emma Carrington and if you are interested in true crime and justice you are in the right place. So I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button because we'd love to have you join us. By way of disclaimer, we discuss true crime cases involving domestic abuse and domestic homicide on this channel. So if this is not the kind of content you were looking for, I completely understand. Thanks for stopping by. Now, if you are listening on any pod platform and ever want to see the images that go along with these cases, you can find us on YouTube at Trapped by Love. But wherever you are, please know that I appreciate you. Let's go ahead and get into today's case. Today we're going to be discussing the extremely upsetting case of Paul Jenner. First off, I want to apologise because there is really not a great deal of information out there on this case. So I have done the best that I could to gather as much info as possible. Much of what is in the media and that I have included here comes from a 24 hours in police custody episode which took me forever to track down. So I'll put a link to it in the description box below if you want to check it out. But beyond that, there's really nothing else out there in relation to this case. So let me introduce you to Paul Jenner. Paul was born in 1978 which meant in 2019, he was a 42 year old man who lived with his partner of seven years in Bedfordshire. He was said to be a friendly, bubbly and outgoing person with a good sense of humor, always ready for a laugh. His friends describe him as gentle, kind and loving. He had known his partner, Sherry Maydew since childhood and though Paul was committed to Sherry, the pair were known to police because of the many disturbances and instances of abuse. Sherry was controlling as well as physically abusive to Paul. Throughout their history with the police though, Paul would never give a statement about any of the assaults. He was always loyal to Sherry. Paul would never name her as his abuser. At the time of this incident, Sherry had been home for only a matter of days. Home, that is, from prison, where she'd been locked up for assaulting Paul six months earlier. On the 23rd of October, 2019, police were called to the scene of an assault. Paul had been left badly injured at the couple's home in Bedfordshire. Paul is taken to Luton and Dunstable Hospital with facial injuries, and after a scan, he was also found to have bleeding on the brain, which the doctor said was so severe that he may not survive. Meanwhile, police got a warrant for Sherry's arrest. They tracked her down at a friend's house and brought her in for questioning. Sherry confidently told her friend as she was led away in handcuffs, I'll be out tonight, I'll see you soon. Then she came into the station joking with the desk sergeant. And when investigating officer Alicia Lawrence came in, she tried for some tears. Right. You pissed me off, boy, do it again to me. We'll have a chat with can, okay? Saying, quote, he's done it again to me. He's pissed me off. Why has he done it to me again? End quote. Now, even though he was initially in and out of consciousness, Paul managed to make a call to 999 while he was in intensive care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Got your keys. Oh, wow. 
fields were well good. Named wow. it, described everything. It was a ball. Sherry was questioned by Officer Alicia Lawrence and she wouldn't give the police any information. She was then played Paul's 999 call and when asked what she thought about it, she replied, quote, it's bullshit coming out of his mouth. I didn't do nothing to him, end quote. Officer Lawrence showed Sherry a photo that was taken at the time that Paul was taken from the home by ambulance. Sherry is seen hanging out outside a neighbor's house. Officer Lawrence asks why she isn't helping her partner while he's being wheeled away to the ambulance and who she thinks did this to him if it wasn't her. Sherry continues to say nothing. At this point, Sherry was charged with grievous bodily harm with intent which carries a term of up to life in prison. And she yawned and smiled as she was read her rights. The police took statements from Paul and Sherry's neighbours about what they had seen in order to bolster their case. What did you see? When you turned up about Thursday, I was standing there and he, I could see that he had a black hair and some cuts in his face, I think. Did he say anything about it? No, he didn't. Did literally, we were sat watching TV here, looked at my window, and he sat slumped over on the floor. She just comes from walking around here screaming at him, like, why are you on the floor? Get the fuck off the floor, rah, rah, rah. And then some woman's quite the only way here, and she's the next one gone polite. Oh, come on, boy, get up, boy, all right. She says very much what she does. Paul wasn't in a good way at all and he'd been transferred to a specialist brain trauma unit in Addenbrooke's hospital in Cambridge for treatment as he had two bleeds on the brain. Alicia and a colleague went to speak with Paul in hospital to see if they could change his mind about supporting the case against Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. That is so heartbreaking to me. Where would I live? This is obviously a huge concern for him because in the 999 call, he says he'll have to get his key back. So this is a real concern for him. But to a person who's never been in a position like this and never had their mind completely warped by an abusive partner, this sounds so crazy. The answer to where would I live is anywhere, right? Anywhere is better than where you are. There are so many options and you have people sitting right here begging to help you right now. But it's not that simple when you're in the middle of it and your mind is muddled by all you've been told for years. Things like you'll never survive without me, that you are useless, that no one will help you, that no one will believe you. So to Paul, this one hurdle was insurmountable. Where will I live? It can be as simple as that, as to why someone stays. For me, it was that my house was a mess. I know, right? Makes no sense. I had a brand new baby. I was exhausted, hypervigilant, running on empty and grossly underweight. But anytime I thought about calling for help, for someone to come and pick me up and get me out of there, I would look around me and knew that I couldn't take the judgment about the state of my house as well as what people would think or say about my relationship, even my family, especially my family. I guess that's why it can be so hard to answer, why didn't you just leave? Because it's all those little things that make no sense to anyone. In this clip, it's so good to see Paul finally beginning to open up and consider accepting the help that the investigator is offering at the end of his conversation. Tragically, six days after the officer's visit to the hospital, Paul had a heart attack and fell into a coma. He was on life support and had no brain function. His family came in to be with him and removed the ventilator. Paul passed that evening. When police received his personal effects, they found an article about a men's domestic abuse refuge in his things, which is so upsetting. He seemed like he was ready to break away. It was just a fraction too late. Once Paul died, the case was referred to the major crime unit for further investigation. Paul's brain was sent off to be examined and the injuries assessed to determine if the injuries sustained led to his death. Police had the clothing that Sherry had been wearing on the night of the incident. They had Paul's blood on them, even though they had been found freshly laundered in the washing machine. Police also tracked down CCTV footage of the couple from their estate, showing their comings and goings. In these recordings, injuries are evident on Paul's face. He is also seen staggering and holding his head as if he's in pain. The police are pleased with this, as it's evidence that Sherry was with Paul around the time that the injuries occurred, seeing as they didn't have any eyewitnesses to the assault itself. The police involved the people who knew the couple best, and the stories they heard were consistent. Sherry was aggressive. Who's, who's been the main one who's kind of always been the aggressive one? Sherry. Yeah, the amount of times I've seen him with black eyes and that. And I say to him, she done that to your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he'd always go back to her. I, I think he's petrified of her. He's petrified of her, okay. Look, like we told him hundreds and hundreds of times. When she comes out, don't bother taking her back. I said, Paul, you're going to be end up in the box. And look where he is now, in the box. We'd just sit there and have a laugh and watch films together and that. He'd cook me dinner sometimes. It was brilliant. What's your relationship been like with Sherry? Um, not really good. Okay. Just we don't really get on. Okay. Why is She's that? She's quite feisty, violent. She just, you know, lash out at Paul. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. 
many times. Describe that to me. Punch, punching. She punched him in the head. Was there any kind of pattern as to when this violence would occur? It could happen any time, um, because she was always drunk. I've witnessed loads of things when she's um, put cups over his head, smashed a cup over his head and split all his neck here. And she just done that because he flinched away from her. Because when she was around, um, he wouldn't have been able to look at me or nothing. He'd have to look at the wall. Why? Because the way she was, she was controlling. After the inquest into Paul's death, a pathologist found the cause of death to be complications from an acute bleed and traumatic head injuries. They also found that Paul was suffering from chronic alcohol disease. The coroner, Sean Cummings, recorded a conclusion of unlawful killing. He said, quote, After hearing the evidence, I consider that it is likely beyond the balance of probability that Sherry Nadu did subject Paul Jenner to a violent assault, and that assault put in train a sequence of events that led to his death. End quote. However, a neuropathologist agreed with the defence that the bleeding on Paul's brain could have occurred over a period of time when Sherry was in custody for the previous offence. Yeah, let's not forget that this isn't an isolated occurrence. A pathologist also said she could not rule out the possibility that Paul had accidentally stumbled to the floor after drinking. Well, of course not. You can't rule out him being kicked in the head by a horse either, but his live-in partner admitted to thumping him. So why not go with that scenario as the most likely rather than a maybe could be possible alternative? Sorry, just a little ranty. Anyway, with all that said, despite admitting to assaulting Paul, Luton Crown Court Judge Lynn Tayton said there was no case to answer on the murder charge nor for the alternative charge of manslaughter. The judge took into account Sherry's troubled childhood and the fact that she had been abused in a previous relationship. And she went on to find Sherry guilty of actual bodily harm and sentenced her to 16 months in jail. 16 months. Feel free to share your rage about that one in the comments because I can't even process. I'm kind of short-circuiting right now. But that, my cherubs, is all I have for you today. If the content in this case has raised any concerns for you regarding your own relationship or that of a loved one, please reach out for help. Please, please, please. There's a list of resources in the show notes and the description box below, please know that you're not alone. There is help out there. My aim in covering these cases is to honour the victims of these crimes and to get their stories out there in the hopes of warning others who may face similar situations. The hope is that the more people who recognise the red flags and warning signs of abusive relationships, the less prevalent these cases will be in the future. Knowledge is power. I thank you again for joining me this week and until next time, please take care of yourselves and be kind to one another.